Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Today we're continuing our study on the topic of 101 verses that prove the doctrine that salvation is by faith alone. No religious works are required for salvation. So um, I think this is our third uh, video on this subject. And I expect it's probably the third of many before we get through 101 verses. <laughs> so uh, if, you, if you have not seen the previous videos, they're uh, uploaded and available on my YouTube channel, Sin City Preacher. Uh, and the, the playlist has that title, 100 Verses Proving Faith Alone. Uh, so I hope you will go back and watch this from the beginning. Uh, today we're going to pick up with the next verse, uh, but before we get started in that, uh, I have uh, with me working on this project together is Brother Jason Jack. So just maybe you want to just introduce yourself. And I hope everybody will subscribe to uh, uh, Jason Jack's uh, YouTube channel. And uh, any, any opening thoughts before we get started? Okay, uh, I guess I just can't r repeat it enough how much uh, I'm enjoying this fellowship with you and uh, studying these uh, scriptures together. So uh, this is the fourth video in the series, and uh, today we're going to begin with Romans chapter 4, verse 3, and in the KJV it says, For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. All right, brother, explain that to me. Yeah, that's, you know, the gospel's always been, uh, the gospel is the everlasting gospel, and what saves us today is what saved us uh, at the beginning of creation, and what saved us in Abraham, um, you know, 4,000 years ago or so. Um, and so here, Basically, Paul is referring back to Genesis 15, 6, that says, And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness, uh, referring to Abraham. And Paul does this a lot, um, citing Old Testament scripture and uh, the account of the, of the life of Abraham to show uh, that salvation has always been by faith. Uh, you know, Abraham is in the faith chapter in, in Hebrews 11 and found in uh, the book of Galatians and elsewhere. Um, so this is very straightforward. Um, the person of Abraham believed had faith in God, and that faith was counted unto him for righteousness. So just the opposite of being justified by words. And if you go up to verse 2, it says, For if Abraham were justified by words, he has whereof to glory, but not before God. So if we do things that are profitable to others, you know, that justifies us in the sight of mankind. But God doesn't need our righteousness. He is perfect in his righteousness. And he wants us to just rest in his promise and believe in the finished work of what he did uh, for us for eternal life. And that comes by faith. And then once we believe um, in that promise, then our faith is counted as righteousness. And it's not our righteousness. That, that we receive, you know, it's, it's God's righteousness that is imputed uh, unto us. Hmm. Well, uh, 
I know you've uh, you probably like to uh, scan your way through my YouTube channel and you've seen uh, kind of the the all the videos that I've produced and there's also many playlists. I think I have about 65 playlists. One of the playlists uh, is um, called Character Studies. Um, uh, I've, I've done a lot of uh, character studies where I, I basically I started at the beginning um, uh, discussing all the main characters of the Bible, the ones that I think are uh, really the most significant, starting with Adam and Eve and then the devil uh, and, and, and then the main characters. And we, we get to Abraham at a certain point in the scriptures. And so I've, I've done quite, quite an in-depth uh, study and teaching on Abraham. And he is, um, you know, he's called Father Abraham uh, because it seems like they, 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 we, we trace everything back to Abraham and this promise. Of course, we know, we know that uh, um, even before Abraham, that this, the gospel, uh, the good news that uh, God would provide salvation to um, all of humanity uh, God would handle it for us if we just believe in him and trust him for it. So we can go back even before Abraham uh, to learn that. But Abraham is called Father Abraham and because I, I think he's, he's like the father of what they call the great religions of the world. Now, I don't believe any religions are great. I don't, I don't consider Christianity a religion because religion uh, means that you are you're supposed to do something religiously, whether it's um, go to church or follow some religious set of rules. Or, but Christianity or Christianity that we find in the Bible is not a religion in, the, in that it's, it's not based on things that we are required to do. It's based upon believing what Jesus has done for us. So uh, Christianity uh, is... Um, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ as your Savior, where you're relying on Him and what He's done and His promises, uh, not uh, your ability to be religious. But you have Judaism, go tra they trace it, their beliefs back to Abraham. You have Islam, they trace their beliefs back to uh, Abraham. Uh, and we don't need to go through all of the, the details on, on how they would um, uh, explain that position, but he is he is probably one of the most prestigious, esteemed people in the Bible. And it says here, talking about Abraham believed God. But brother, I don't I don't know how many character studies you you've done. I imagine you've read the whole Bible from cover to cover, and you're familiar with these characters. And um, but uh, I found that. No matter who the person is in the Bible, no matter how great they are, no matter how respected they are um, in the church, uh, they're all flawed. And so Abraham believed God, but he also had a lot of uh, unbelief and, and, and uh, times where he, he didn't seem to believe. Um, I'll, I'll go into a little bit more detail on that in, in a minute. But uh, the point I'm getting at in a very roundabout way and we've done enough of these now, you're probably saying, Luke, why do you take so long to make your point? <laughs> but it says he believed God. And the point I want to emphasize is that you only have to believe God one time. And it's, it's, it's a moment in time where we put our faith in God to be our Savior. And we know, now we know that God has revealed more about who he is and what he's done for us that the Savior God is Jesus Christ, and the means of salvation is he died for our sins and rose from the dead. So now we know more than Abraham knew. But uh, at a moment in time, we put our faith in God to, to save us, and then we're saved. It's an event. It's not a process where we, we have to believe, and you have to continue believing, and you have to remain faithful in your, in your faith for the rest of your life and never have any doubts or unbelief. Uh, but there were times where Abraham and Sarah uh, didn't really, they're not very good examples of, of believing. I, are, you, are you familiar with those, uh, those instances where they've, uh, we could say, well, wait a second, he's, he's so admired, but how do you explain this, uh, this behavior from him?
religious will claim, uh, you know, typically the monotheistic religions, um, Christianity, Judaism, and, and Islam, with Islam and Judaism, you know, they don't accept Jesus Christ as the Son of God or their Savior. They don't accept the New Testament uh, as truth. Um, you know, but if they would, you know, see Jesus in the Old Testament, then maybe it could get them to look at the New Testament verses like this in Romans 4 2, where they see Father Abraham and then they see his justification by works, but it's not before God. You know, and so that just shows that if you to the next verse, it's by faith, it's, it's by believing in God and being accepting his righteousness, and, and ultimately it's, it's um, through Jesus Christ. And so I hope that, you know, anybody that may watch this video and, you know, if, if they see Abraham being referenced, that they would look at these New Testament scriptures to see what the Old Testament passages are pointing to, and that's to Jesus Christ and faith along in Him for salvation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, well, well um, initially, when God began interacting with Abraham, Abraham, God told Abraham, I'm, I'm just paraphrasing, I don't know exactly where it says it off the top of my head or exactly how it's phrased, but basically God tells Abraham that, look, uh, I'm, I, I'm choosing you for this purpose through you and your descendants. Um, uh, we're going to bless the whole world, and, and, and so the world will can be saved because Abraham... Uh, you and your, your family line is going to uh, be the means that I'm going to accomplish this. And, and, but I want, Abraham, what I want you to do is pack up and move. And, and Abraham believed God, and he packed up and moved. Um, but, so I, to me, that's the initial faith that, that uh, Abraham demonstrated, and, and uh, the, the fact that he was able to pack up and move, um, and when everybody around him probably was wondering what this is not making any sense, but he believed God, so he did it. Uh, but we also know that Abraham uh, was uh, convinced by his wife a couple of times uh, to uh, uh, do something that would indicate that, wait a second, have you lost your faith in what God's promise? God said that you're going to have these descendants, this descendant, and, and that uh, is going to be the most significant person in the world. Abraham didn't understand about the cross and all of that, I don't think, but but um, it was all based upon Abraham having a descendant uh, to be uh, this, this promised one. And yet, he got really old, and his wife got really old, and then she, and she got barren. Uh, I mean, she was barren. She never had any children. So the wife is convincing him, well, I'm too old. I mean, God's, uh, you know, we can't wait for God to do this. And uh, so doubt, doubt entered in with, with Sarah. And then she convinced Abraham uh, and, and made him have his own doubts about God being able to do this because they were so old. And she convinced him that he needed a, a handmaiden to conceive a child since she was barren and she got Hagar, an Egyptian handmaiden, and through Hagar and Abraham, you got Ishmael. And because of that, you got like all the Muslim nations of the world, you know? And then, uh, in the, but the one that was supposed to, the family line that was supposed to be uh, uh, used by God was the offspring of Abraham and Sarah. But Sarah, lost her faith, and she, Abraham apparently lost his faith because he agreed to, to, to uh, use Sarah, Hagar. They took it into their own hands, just like Adam and Eve took it into their own hands to sew together those fig leaves, you know, and, and God had to provide the animal skin covering. Well, Abraham and Sarah took it in their hands to use Hagar, but God said, God's plan was, no, it's going to be between Abraham and Sarah, and eventually, 
they did have uh, offspring, uh, Isaac. And that's God's plan. But my point in, in all of this is that, uh, look, he only had to believe initially. And even Abraham, who's called uh, the, uh, the, a man of faith, and he's in the faith chapter in, in uh, Hebrews, he's on that list. I think he's probably number one on the list, if I remember right. Uh, and yet he's this great man of faith. And yet look at this example of lack of faith in God to keep his promise because they were old and, and barren. Yeah, so um, the reason I took enough all that time to explain that is because I think it's important for people to understand that salvation, this, it says here, this um, faith that Abraham has is that Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So when he initially believed God, he, he was saved. Uh, he, he was, he's guaranteed eternal life because God counted his belief as righteousness. So he was, he was deemed righteous and that's how we get to go to heaven if we're righteous. But we can't get righteous on our own because our righteousness is not really anything except as the Bible says like filthy rags. That's our righteousness. So he, uh, is deemed righteous because of the imputed righteousness that you get because of faith. But you can see that after that, they lost faith at a certain point. And yet, uh, do you think that Abraham and Sarah lost their salvation? Yeah, so um, all this to just to make the point that uh, in, in just a moment of faith in, in God to save you, and now we know more than Abraham knew. We know that the, the God Savior uh, it is necessary to believe in is Jesus Christ. So the moment we believe in Jesus Christ as our Savior God, and we rely on him as we've discussed in these previous videos, then at that moment, an event takes place, uh, and we, we, uh, Bible says we're regenerated, we're, we're, we're quickened. Our dead spirit is brought to life, and uh, we are born again from above, and we are a child of God at that moment. We're, it's a, it's a new birth, a spiritual birth, and then at this, this event is irreversible, and it's irrevocable, even if at some point in the future we lose our faith the way Abraham and Sarah did. All right. Uh, anything else we need to say about this before we go to the next verse? No, I don't think so. Of course, the next one on the list is the next two verses. <laughs> we don't have the flip part for the next one. Oh, okay. Let me see. Yeah, this is uh, Romans 4 and 5. Okay. Let me pull that up then. Uh, I'll just, I'll just do this whole chapter four, look at it that way. Uh, okay, so verses four and five says, Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, 
but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Uh, that's interesting. The, the phrase there in verse 5 is the same phrase that's in verse 3. It says about Abraham believing God, it says it was counted unto him for righteousness. And in verse 5 it says his faith is counted for righteousness. And that, that's talking about you and me and anybody today uh, who will believe on him. Uh, okay, I don't want I wanted you to go first on this, so rather than me jumping ahead and explaining it. So verse four and five, please uh teach us on that. Uh this is one of the clearest verses I use it when I show that you know receiving the free gift of eternal life is not anything that we do. Um the the flesh you did, what Christ did on the cross for us and and this is something that we can never earn, but rather it's unmerited favor, uh, which is the grace of God that uh, gives us this free gift. Uh, if you work for it, then you know this reward, this free gift, um, will not be given by grace yeah, because you are still under the debtor system of the law. Just to make sure, verse three and four, two, three and four were clear enough. Um, you know, but the end of work is not. So don't try to earn it. You know, uh, but believe on Him to just talk down godly, which is Jesus Christ. Um, and then, like you said, the end of verse five reiterates what verse three says, and which is quoted from. Um, you uh, that this is one of the primary go-to verses to support our uh, our belief that uh, uh, salvation uh, is by faith alone in Christ alone without any religious works required on our part so that's the whole point of this entire series is to emphasize it's faith alone no works are required and then this is one of the verses that actually talks about uh, the w works. Uh, uh, how, could it, could, how could it be stated any more clearly? He says, but to him that worketh not. So that worketh not, that doesn't mean that, uh, well, this is a person that, uh, you know, they didn't go, quit their job and, and move their family to uh, Africa and become a missionary and, you know, sell everything their own, they just really completely sold out and surrendered their lives to Jesus. Um, that that would be like an extreme example of someone that's got, gone to that extent uh, in ministry. Uh, and then, but it's not talking about that. It's, ta it's work if not means you did zero. You didn't even go to church one day in your life. You never even said one prayer. You, you, never, you never even did one good deed. You, you never uh, repented of your sins or anything. All you did was believe on Jesus for your salvation. That's all you did. So worketh not means you did zero works, not one work at all. And that is how I would take worketh not. Uh, so a person who did absolutely nothing, uh, but they believe on the one who justifieth the ungodly, well, we know from the context of the whole Bible that it, you know that we we it's clearly uh, we can conclude that that person it's referring to is Jesus Christ. He's the one that justifies the ungodly. Uh, so, but believeth on Jesus Christ who justifies the ungodly. I, I could phrase it that way. His faith is counted for righteousness. 
Um, so this is maybe more explicitly than maybe any other verse in the Bible, maybe apart from Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 that we talked about on the first uh, session. This is clearly showing us the contrast uh, between faith and works and that absolutely zero works are required. Um, there, I want to talk about this um, uh, debt, the concept of a debt next. But before I do, just in, anything else on what I just said? Any thoughts on that? Okay, yeah. Yeah, so even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works. So again, this is without works. Uh, 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 to me, that means zero works without any works at all. See, a lot of people, when they think that works are required, the obvious follow-up question is, well, exactly which works do you referring to and exactly how many are required? And uh, they, no one can give a, a good answer. The Lordship Salvation uh, preachers, uh, they're at a loss. Uh, they don't agree on exactly what works are required. And then they certainly don't agree on what degree of success do you have to have. Is it 100%? Uh, you have to work every minute of the day. Uh, and you have to be perfect. Or uh, So um, uh, that's the obvious question is, well, okay, what works and, and how many? But these verses here are telling us that to the man that worketh not, that means you did zero work. And then in verse 6, as you pointed out, it says, God imputes righteousness without works. So th th this is clearly sit should settle the case that it's not, not even a question of degrees. How, okay, works are required, but how many works? What exactly are the works? Well, forget about all that. Just discard that whole idea. It's not a matter of degrees. Uh, uh, a re relative compared to other people. You work more than most people, so you get it. You get salvation. No, if you work, to the man that worked not did nothing. That's that's what's important to understand. Now, the, the next thing I want to ask you about is when it says uh, in verse uh, four, it says, uh, "Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt." Now. You know, I, I've, I think that in uh, our teaching here, uh, I might be confusing this with Jack Smack, uh, one of our talks, but I, I believe I've, I've, I've mentioned the idea that uh, someone, when they die, they understand that there's going to be a judgment. Uh, most people who really don't know anything about the Bible or, or Christianity, uh, a lot of people are just still believe somehow they die and God's going to judge them. And uh, so at, at this judgment, what do we, how do we present our case to God? If he says, why should I let you into heaven? What possible reason can you give me that I should give you eternal life in heaven? And so if someone had to plead their case, uh, if they argue that they earned it because of the work, good works that they've done, then what they're doing is making God 
their debtor. God owes them. It's like going before God and your answer to him is, well, God, you asked me why should I get eternal life in heaven? It's because you owe me. Uh, I've been so good. I've been far better than anybody I know. I'm, uh, and you got, they go on boasting and boasting and over and over again in the scriptures that tell us that you better not boast to God. But that person is in a position where they end up having to boast to God in pleading their case that I deserve heaven. In fact, uh, I'm so good, I deserve heaven, and I didn't even have to believe in your son, Jesus. Uh, so uh, to me, that kind of an argument to God is absolutely disgusting to me. And I'm sure God is disgusted by anybody who thinks that they can go before God and say, God, uh, let me into heaven because you owe me. instinctually gone to Galatians 3.10 or, or if you just had looked ahead in the notes and saw that's the next very next verse that we're going to talk about and um, 
I'll read that now because I believe that that's the one you referenced and uh, we're talking about. Galatians 3.10 says, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Uh, so, um, I don't know, uh, maybe you can tell me if you just um, naturally went to that uh, next point uh, or knew we were going to go there anyway. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I didn't see that. I, I went to Galatians 5.3 uh, and then James 2.10 with that, with that thought process. But yeah, it ties right into this that verse. Um, Galatians 3.10, I'm just turning to it. Um, yeah, because it, if it's for as many as are of the works of the law or under the curse, um, and then cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So if you, if, if you want to get yourself under the law, then you need to keep them 100% in order to be perfect. And as we know, nobody can do that. Nobody's perfect. Um, and, um, you know, that, yeah, that, that ties in exactly to um, James 2.10 and, uh, and later on in the book of Galatians, uh, you know, Paul's making this point throughout to, um, to the church of Galatia because there's people that come in that were coming in and, and preaching a cursed gospel. You know, they were, they were missing um, works that they were doing to the finished work of Christ and perverting the gospel. And that was his whole point of the book of Galatians is to show, you know, that if you put any part of your righteousness with God's grace and his finished work on the cross and your money in the gospel, and, you're gonna, and, and if you don't continue in all those things which are written in the book of law, then you're, you're cursed, you know, you're, you're in debt. Um, you know, you're a debtor of the law. Yeah, the uh, Galatians 3.10 is the next one on the list. So whoever compiled this list uh, thinks the way you do. And that was the logical next point to make, uh, along with the other verses you referenced. Uh, uh, so that this basically answers the question that I was posing earlier. And that is, if someone believes that uh, works are required, even though the verse, last verse we're talking about is if the man that worketh not, that means zero works. And when it talks about deep and what David did, it, 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 we, we conclude that no, this is, you did nothing. Nothing was done. And yet you're credited with righteousness only because of believing. So that's what it, it tells us that no works are required. And if someone argues, well, works are required, and you say, well, what works? How many works? This next verse here is telling us, well, if you want to do, earn salvation through works, then what would be required of you is it's got to be perfect. You've got to do all the works, and, and you've got to do them perfectly all the time. And so uh, I'm glad these verses are there because it should just be a slap across uh, the prideful face of these uh, lordship um, teachers uh, because... They, they, they should come to their senses and say, well, gee, I, 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 you mean I have to do every, every, uh, thing and I have to do not only everything uh, religious, but I must do it all perfectly all the time. I can't do that. And they should be able to come to their senses. And that's, as Paul says, that should be your schoolmaster. That should bring you to your senses and make you understand it's impossible. Just like Jesus talked about with the rich young ruler and told his apostles that, see, uh, they said, how is it possible for anyone to be saved, Lord? And he said, well, with man, it is impossible. So that's what we want everybody to realize is that it's impossible to earn salvation through works. The standard is perfection. Um, now, you mentioned pride and, or, or humility, and I want to get back to that for a second on that. To me, um, we, we, we keep going back to the garden and the fall, uh, or at least I, I always go back to that uh, to see what happened in the beginning. Is, is just, it's, a, it's an ongoing problem that, that uh, everybody 
everybody continues to uh, do the same thing. Uh, and that is pride, thinking that I don't need God. I can handle this myself. You're lost. You're going to hell. Well, don't worry. I can, I can solve that problem myself. I'll just change my life and make myself good enough and God will accept me. And I don't need Jesus and his death on the cross or resurrection. I don't need all that. I, I can deal with it. I can do it myself. So that's pridefulness. That's thinking that you don't need God. And in the garden, that's really what it boiled down to. Uh, God wanted Adam and Eve just to rely on him. Uh, you don't need to know the knowledge of good and evil. You don't need to know that. Just keep eating the tree of life and, and I'll handle everything else for you. Don't worry about that. Uh, but they just insisted, no, I believe the devil and I, I want to know right and wrong. That way I won't need God. I, I can handle it all myself. I can make all the decisions. Once I know what right and wrong is, uh, I'll be able to make the decisions and do the right things. So it's pridefulness. And... Uh, um, in, instead of humility. So I, I think the state of mind that a person needs to come to is just a state of humility and realizing that their, their, their um, situation is uh, hopeless and helpless. That uh, there is, it's impossible for them to uh, um, earn a good standing with God and when they realize that this, what they have to do is be perfect from their first breath to their last breath, and they realize that it's impossible, that they will realize, my situation is hopeless. What can I do? Well, don't worry. God, uh, he will provide himself a sacrifice. Like he said with uh, the, the angel said to uh, Abraham, uh, when he's getting ready to sacrifice on Isaac, uh, he said God will provide himself a sacrifice. I, I believe that you could say that God will provide himself as a sacrifice. Uh -huh. um, so uh, it, it's, I, I have a video talking about self. Um, you know, the problem with self, being focused on self, whether it's self-confidence. Don't put confidence in yourself that you can solve the problem and and uh, you don't need God to, to be your savior because you're confident in your own ability. Uh, don't don't have self reliance. In other words, don't don't think don't rely on yourself as the the solution to the problem. Rely on Jesus to be your savior. Um, self esteem. No, don't esteem yourself. Don't think much of yourself. Have humility and understand that you're a sinner and you're 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 a hopeless sinner, and that's why you need to esteem God. The Bible it says that all glory goes to God, and uh, he doesn't share his glory. So if people think that they can uh, accomplish any of this on their own, then their ability to go before God and boast is they're basically stealing the glory that res should be reserved for God. It all boils down to, what is, this is not about ourselves. It's, it's not about you. It's about God. And uh, that's what people need to realize. Um so, uh, anything else about Galatians 3.10 or anything else I've said? No, I think the reason that I was referring to pride and humility so much is because of my life. And, you know, I was full of pride and thought I could figure out the purpose of life and the meaning of life and, and all these different big questions on my own. And it took a moment in time where finally I said, God, I've been trying to do it my way all these years, and I haven't figured anything out. I'm going to leave it up to you and trust you. And I came to a point of humility uh, and put it in God's hand and said, I don't care what you tell me. I just want to know the truth, and I'll, I'll, I'll believe it. And started reading his word, and, you know, that's when the answer started coming, you know. Uh, looking back on it, that's when I got saved. Up and, um, you know, but that, that typically 
outside of our hands that we can achieve ourselves. Um, and so that's why humility is so important in giving our heart receptive to the gospel message. Um, and, you know, you, you mentioned, uh, again, you know, refer back to Romans 4-2, uh, for they were and were justified by words. He has words to glory, but not before God. And, you know, if you look at Galatians 3 11, right after the verse we just discussed, Galatians 3 11 says, But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. Um, so, you know, the, these, these two verses that we, or these two passages that we discussed in Romans 4 and Galatians 3 really do go hand in hand. Uh, uh, to make these points uh, very clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the 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 sometimes the lordship preachers um, they want to impose a uh, a mindset uh, on people as a prerequisite for salvation and. and I don't want people to think that I'm I'm actually um, um, promoting that with what I just said. Um, even though humility, uh, humbling ourselves, and 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 uh, uh, rather than being prideful, it, it, what I'm the point I'm trying to make about this is that when we when we have this attitude, uh, then uh, we are ready. To, rec to, to appeal to Jesus, call on the name of the Lord Jesus, or which means that, hey, I, I realize I, I'm lost and I can't do anything about it. I, Lord, I need you. Uh, believe, I, I'm going to believe and trust you now instead of myself. Uh, so that state of mind prepares a person for um, that inevitable conclusion that, hey, it's, uh, I can't do it. I need to be saved. But I don't want anybody to think that a person must come, must have that mindset before they can be saved. Because some people are saying, you've got to shed tears. You've got to have contrition. You've got to have a broken heart. And I don't want them to say, well, Brother Luke, you're saying that uh, you've got to have a humble heart. No, you don't have to. But when a person does is humbled and they recognize this uh, situation, uh, it prepares them so they now they can... Uh, believe and, and, and call on the Lord to save them. Uh, even though a person could have pride and still get saved, I don't think they have to be a humble person to be saved, but but uh, it's unlikely if a person has a lot of pride, they're not going to recognize that, hey, they uh, they are out, it's out of their control. They just, they're, they're, they cannot do it on their own. They need to be saved. They can't save themselves. Personalities and different uh, emotions, and, and some people are more emotional, and some more stoic. And, uh, it, it's just whatever um, whatever conditions uh, in your life that it gives you to have a receptive heart to once you hear the gospel to believe it. Uh, whatever those circumstances are in that person's life, that's what uh, we need to do. Um, you know, whatever way um, our hearts are being conditioned in our lifetime to be interceptive for the gospel. And then, you know, once we um, have that, whatever means, um, it comes about in a person's life, then um, hear the word of God, you know, and that's where the faith comes, you know, once you hear it and you have that receptive heart, then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Then that's when you go on to um, acknowledge the truth in your heart and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so the, the next verse then, uh, can I go on or anything else you want to add before I... I go uh, okay. Uh, Titus 3, 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Uh, let me look at six also, because I hate to have a semicolon uh, there and without having the next uh, thought here. Uh, 
Let's, let's see what 6 says also. Um, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Okay. Uh, all right. Brother, what about that? Titus 3, 5, and 6. examples of the uh, foundation that we laid at the very beginning of this series. And that is that uh, our conclusion about doctrine, particularly about soteriology, the, 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 the study of salvation, what is it, what is uh, needed for salvation? To understand that and to, to uh, form your conclusion, you, we need to rely on the verses that are clear, explicit, that are not ambiguous and not even controversial. They say what they say. There's not two ways to understand it. Uh, it's clear cut and it should be the final answer and, and it should be shutting your mouth. Uh, I have a video titled, Cursed Be Gone. And I, I say in that video that if, if you receive this video from me, sometimes I'll send it to someone. And it's basically the conversation's over. I said, look, I've, I've tried to be reasonable with you. I've answered your questions. You keep insisting that um, uh, you know faith in Jesus is not enough, that more is required on our part. And you're, now Jesus told me I shouldn't cast the pearls to the swine. I need to dust off my feet and move on. But basically what you're doing by insisting that faith in Jesus is insufficient, what you're doing is you're spitting in the face of our Savior on the cross and saying that's not enough. And so uh, a verse like this is something that should shut their mouth and conversation's over now. Now you understand, now you should be converted and, and repent and change your mind that, about works having any, any uh, uh, part in our salvation because it says, not by works of righteousness which we have done. Now that's as explicit as it can get. But according to his mercy, only because he's merciful he'll save us uh, it's not because of any works of righteousness. Uh, now, our uh, let me see. I think we are we're approaching an hour. We're 55 minutes right now, so um, I'm having such a good time. I could go on for another hour easily, but I, I think it's best to keep these videos about an hour each. Uh, it's a, it's asking people a lot to spend an hour watching a video, uh, and. Uh, even though I watch a lot of videos that are long, but I watch them like five, ten minute portions, you know, you can pause it 
you can stop it and come back to it, you know. There's no reason why a person should be intimidated or, or not interested because the video's an hour or two hours long. <laughs> but I'm trying to keep these uh, about an hour. So um, I, I say, uh, anything else you want to say about this verse? And uh, also, any, uh, like, summary uh, of the study today? Yes. 
spiritual discernment and you're resting assured in your, um, you know, in believing in Jesus Christ and not necessarily even resting in your faith, but resting in his faithfulness of his promise to you. And, um, and so I'll, I'll stop right there because I know we're probably right at an hour over and I'll turn it back over to you, but I enjoy tonight. Thankfully. Yes. Okay. Well, you know, I'm always tempted to go on and on and on. Uh, you've probably learned that sometimes I'm a little long-winded when I get started, but uh, uh, I really like what you, that last point you just made, uh, along with everything you said, but that last point to me is, is really significant. Is instead of thinking about our faith, think more about his faithfulness. You know, our faith doesn't have to be perfect because his faithfulness is perfect. Um, all right, brother. Uh, so glad you were able to find some time today, and I look forward to next time. And to the the viewers, uh, thank you for watching, and I I hope that this is uh, making a difference to to some people. If you were not sure about all this, I I hope this is making you very very clear that uh, you need to reject uh, the idea that you are contributing in any way to your salvation, that can, salvation is contingent upon your behavior and your ability to be religious, and, and, and you reject that entirely, repent of that. That means change your mind about that. And now embrace the belief that uh, your salvation is, is uh, determined only, as it says here on this shirt, it says, Jesus, one way to heaven, where salvation is determined by, do you trust Jesus completely? Are you relying on him completely? Are you rejecting the idea that, that uh, you are somehow have to contribute to it, that Jesus uh, did not do enough? Uh, please, please come to your senses if that's what you think. And instead, believe entirely on Jesus, rely completely on him. And, and when that happens, as it says here, uh, you get regenerated. You will be brought to life. You'll have the Holy Spirit uh, indwelling in you forever. And as Brother Jason Jack says, with, once we have the Holy Spirit, then we'll have, it'll, this will be much easier for you to understand. All right, so thank you for watching. And bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.